Hello there and welcome to today's video. The topic for today, how to sell your stuff if nobody wants it. How to sell your stuff if nobody wants it, all right? I mean, today I'm gonna to teach you how you can get people excited to buy whatever in the heck you are selling, okay? But before I do that, okay, I want you to promise me something, that the four things I share with you today I want you to promise me that you never, ever misuse them, that you use them ethically, and you don't use them to manipulate people in any way, shape, or form, all right? I want you to promise me that. Is that a deal? Because if it's not a deal, then get off this video, because I can't, I don't want to be held responsible for your lack of integrity, all right? So, if you're still watching, okay, then obviously I'm assuming you need some more help getting some sales because you're just fed up. A lot of people are busting their butt to try and get their sales up and they don't know what to do. And they're, they're darn good people. They are really good people and they're working hard, but it's just not working for them, okay? And the bottom line is this, I suppose, and maybe you like, you don't want me to say this to you, but tell you the truth, it's home truth time. Nobody cares what you've got. They're not the slightest bit interested. They don't care what you've got, all right? And if that's, now if you feel that, and I'm sure you have, right? If you feel sometimes, oh, blimey, Charlie, okay? It's, it's, it's not that you're just fed up, right? You're probably, you're frustrated, you're probably disappointed, you're probably um, disillusioned completely. Maybe you just feel bloody lousy, right? And if that's the case, and if you're not being overwhelmed with sales, then maybe these four things you're going to share with you today can help you, okay? And a small tip before we start. Never sell your product. doesn't matter how good your stuff is. Don't sell your product. Sell what the product can do for people, right? Whether you can do something for a business or do someone for a, something for a person, make them look better, feel better, lose weight, be have longer hair, whatever it may be. Sell what it can do for people, not what it is, all right? My name is Peter Beckham, the village marketer, and as always, talking to you from my little Thai village, way up near the Cambodian border. Okay, here we go, okay? Four tips, four tips that hopefully will get you more sales. And I learned these from a guy called Derek Halpin. He runs a site called Social Triggers. Social Triggers, Derek Halpin, great marketer, okay? Been on it going for years, all right? First one, promise. You need right up front to have a short, punchy, or one-line, attention-grabbing headline. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter what you're selling, you're gonna be completely wasting your time. I mean, why do you think, for example, that movie directors spend so much time working on that first scene for the movie? Think about that, right? Or think of today's video. When, when you join the video, if you didn't, if you joined it right at the start, the very first words I said to you were, today I'm going to teach you how you can get people excited to buy whatever you're selling. So I, that was my punchline, that was my promise, that was my hook right up front for you, okay? All right, number two, so that's your promise. Make sure you've got a promise in there, okay? Number two, picture. Now, you've got to understand that people buy with emotions and then they justify that with the logic, all right? So you've got to paint a picture for them, okay? Not just give features and things, but paint a picture for them. Maybe use some stories if you can. I mean, I try to paint a picture for you based on emotions today in this video. What I said to you was this. If you're still watching, I'm assuming you still need some help with sales because you're just fed up. And then I went on to say to you, maybe you're more than fed up. Maybe you're disillusioned. Maybe you're disappointed or frustrated or you're feeling lousy or just pissed off, right? This was the emotional aspect that you need to introduce as the second part of your presentation. The first one is the promise, the hook, get them their interest right away. And the second one is the picture and the emotion. The third one is the proof, okay? 
You need proof because this is absolutely a very competitive world we're in right now. And everyone seems to be eating everyone else's lunch. And especially if you are selling something that a thousand other people are selling, it's not your own creation, thousands of other people are selling it, then you've got to think, why in the heck should they deal with you? Why should they buy from you rather than your mate down the road or whoever it is? Okay, You need proof for this potential prospect to decide that you're worth dealing with. Now, the best proof, of course, is social proof. In other words, customers you've already got. If you've got customers now, encourage them to give you testimonials in writing or in a little video, whatever it is, and use these things, right? Because people don't want them, they don't want you to tell them anything. They want you to show them. That's the proof they're looking for. Show me that your stuff works. So if you've got customers, let's say you're doing weight loss, right? And you've got customers with before and after photos, then use them. This is pretty important, all right? So that's the third one, proof. Number four is the pitch. I mean, I hate this word, but everyone uses it, so I'm going to use it, right? It's time to pitch your offer, all right? Now, this is where most marketers really stuff things up. What they do is they go straight into their pitch without going through the first three I just talked to you about the promise about the picture and the emotions is about the proof. They go bang, straight into the pitch themselves. And then they think, what happened? Why isn't anyone buying my stuff, right? Well, you, you need to, I mean, think about this. If you get a friend request on Facebook, right? And you accept the friend, you check the profile. Okay, you accept the friend request. And then bang, they send you a link. How does it make you feel? Hmm? How does it make you feel? I mean, it really stirs me up. So the, the idea is this, promise, picture, proof, and then the pitch, in that order, okay? Don't get them out of order, okay? By the way, if you do do the first three steps properly, then how do you actually pitch effectively? How do you make that work for you? I mean, I don't have time in this video to talk about the triggers of why people buy. I mean, things like scarcity, uh, ego, um, social proof, okay, credibility, authority. These are things you can research on those, or if you want more about those, wait to the end of this particular video. I've got a call to action for you that may be of real interest, all right? Okay, now, big tip for you, very big tip for you. We're talking about calls to action. When, when you're doing your pitch, make sure you just have one call to action. Don't have a whole series of them, right? People get confused. And here's an example for you. And I've got this example. I mean, I saw it myself, but I originally learned it from a guy by the name of, ooh, Clark, Clark Kegley, right? Clark Kegley. Young guy, but very talented marketer. And he, he raised my attention to this business about the jams, the jams in supermarkets. And blimey, Charlie, about... About a, a week ago, I saw exactly what he was talking to. Here's a story, okay? And remember, I'm using a story as part of giving you the whole picture, which I mentioned to you before. The town nearest to us is called Sisaket. It's about 20 kilometers away, right? It's got two supermarkets. One's called Tesco, which is a UK-based one, and other one's called Big C, okay? Now, they were both having a jam presentation, okay, in the aisles to the shoppers. Now, in the Tesco one, they had, I'm not sure exactly, 23, 24, 25, I don't know, bottles of jam open, okay? And there was, and they were getting people to look at a whole series of jams. And a crowd of people were there. There's no doubt about that. I mean, people love having something free, don't they, right? But all these people was crowded around all these jams, right? And there were 23, 24 of them. But the interesting thing was this. Very few, if anybody, bought any jam. They didn't buy any jam. Now, at the same time, the same mob who were organising the jams in Tesco were also organising a jam in Big C, the other supermarket a few kilometres away, right? But on this occasion, they went out of this, they went their way to this specifically. They only had four or six jams 
in the aisle for people to taste, right? Just four or six. And guess what happened? The people, as I told you before, in Tesco with the 25 or 26 jams, right? Very few, if anybody, bought any jams. But in Big C with just four or six jams, they sold the place out. They absolutely sold the place out. Where's the message there? The message is that when it relates to your call to action, just give people one decision to make. In the case of Tesco, they had so many decisions. Should I be this one or this one or this one or number 23 or number 18 or number 16? And when people get confused, guess what? They don't make any decisions at all. That's the message. Whereas in Big C with just a couple, they thought, oh, I'll take this one. So that's a message for you. When you're having a call to action for whatever it is, at, the, at part of your pitch, just give one, maximum two, but no more than that. No more than that, all right? So there you go. There's my thoughts for the day. That should help you sell. I can tell you that. Here's my call to action. If you're interested, message me for my brand spanking new training program. And it's called Stress-Free Sales Success Program. If you're interested, send me a personal message. I mean, it's so darn new, I haven't put the sales page together yet, okay? But if you're interested, send me a message, all right? So there you go. Thank you very much for sharing your time with me. Thank you very much also for hanging in there with me. And remember, please don't get them out of order. If you want to sell your stuff, do me a favor. Make a promise and grab their attention. Then use some emotion, right, to paint the picture in their mind. Then give them some social proof and some proof that it's worth it. And then finally, only then when you've done that, do your pitch. There you go. Hope you found it helpful. Take care. Best wishes for Thailand. Talk to you in the very near future. Bye for now.